I'm on the phone with Dr. Milton K. Ehrman, clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of California, San Diego, and president of Pacific Sleep Medicine Services, also in San Diego. He also is serving as a spokesperson for the new vigil study for shift work disorder. Good afternoon, Dr. Ehrman, and thanks for agreeing to the interview. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Today's topic is the new vigil study for shift work disorder. What was the study all about? Well, uh, there are large, very large numbers of uh, people in this country and around the world who do shift work, uh, perhaps uh, 15 million in this country. Many of those people have symptoms associated with their shift work. They're uh, sleepy during their shift work. They may have problems with insomnia when they're trying to sleep. Uh, This study really was focusing on several components of that population that may with shift work disorder, a specific disorder that affects up to 25% of shift workers. Uh, And it was looking at the impact of this medication, uh, New Vigil, which is the generic name for that is armadafinil, uh, as a treatment for complaints of excessive sleepiness that were seen late in the shift work, uh, late in the work shift in these uh, these individuals. So uh, these people were having symptoms between 4 and 8 a.m., and uh, one of the measures that we looked at was how did the individual uh, affect their sleepiness during that latter part of the work shift. What prompted the study? Well, I think there's a, uh, several things. There's a recognition that the, this is a, uh, a condition that exists, a disorder. It's not necessarily terribly well understood. Even, uh, even shift workers themselves may not understand that this is a uh, formally recognized condition. And certainly uh, many practicing physicians may not know about this. So it was using this agent, which is New Vigil, that is approved, uh, FDA approved for the treatment of sleepiness and shift work disorder, using it to see uh, how could we benefit these patients. It's been studied before. It clearly has been shown to be a benefit. But uh, the, there were several things that were slightly different in this study, uh, one of which was looking at uh, their performance late in the shift and others of which were using some very formal uh, and standardized techniques looking at their function to see uh, could we improve their overall function as well as their complaints of sleepiness late in their shift period. Very interesting. What are the effects of this shift work disorder? Well, it it has lots of effects. Certainly one of them is that people who have this uh, condition say that when they are doing their shift work, typically trying to work uh, through the night and uh, having... A difficulty with sleepiness, uh, it is uh, it impacts on performance, impacts on safety. Certainly, there are concerns for these people. Their commute home as well, and the shift work disorder also impacts on their functioning outside outside the shift work setting. They may have difficulty uh, sleeping when they're trying to sleep in the daytime, and it impacts as well on their social and family relationships, their capacity to really function uh, in the in the real world as a consequence of their disturbed shift work schedule and their uh, sleep deprivation. Very interesting. What are the key findings? Well, I think there were uh, a number of key findings. One of them was that, uh, as probably would have been expected, uh, we did see that we were able to have a, a very highly significant uh, impact on sleepiness late in the shift work schedule. These people were uh, more alert, and this was uh, assessed using a, a standardized uh, sleepiness schedule called the Karol- Karolinska Sleepiness Scale. So they had significant improvements in uh, their ratings for their sleepiness. We looked at them also from a more global perspective. This was a study that uh, involved the, the assessment group was about 380 subjects uh, uh, split between uh, active medication and placebo. We were looking also at their uh, functioning using the Global Assessment of Functioning Scale, GAF, uh, which is one of the scales from uh, the DSM-4, uh, very well validated, and again, showing very highly significant uh, improvement as so associated with use of treatment, showing that we were able to take these who were really impaired uh, in their function as a consequence of shift work and take them up into a normal range of functioning. And we had other scales as well, a, a rating scale from the clinician, a clinical global impression of change that also showed, again, very highly significant uh, benefit. Uh, and we're talking about uh, uh, values that were all at the point zero five level uh, or above in terms of their significance. Interesting. Were there any surprises in the study? I would say that uh, uh, one 
surprise, I guess, is that the, the data from, uh, from the GAF was uh, so strong. We were able to show that uh, the clinicians uh, who were using this were all trained in its use, were using it in a very uniform fashion, uh, and that not only was there a significant degree of improvement, but that the level of improvement took these people up into a, a level that's defined on this scale as being uh, normal functioning, whereas prior to uh, treatment, they were uh, below normal, and the placebo group did not get up into the normal range. They showed some improvement, but again, significantly uh, did significantly less well and didn't get up into the normal range. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, perspective, uh, the information on the study for shift work disorder, and for your time today, Dr. Ehrman. Thank you very much. My pleasure.